Okay, this is a video lecture for unit one in the textbook. And this is for the students who could not have the offline class in week two. Okay, so this is a video lecture for week two and it is unit one in our textbook. Right, let's start. So. I'm not going to leave my face there the whole time. Um, so the way that these classes usually go to video lecture. This is for unit one. Okay, so I'm gonna make some notes here as we uh, go through this video. So I'm just gonna write the way that we will usually do the classes. There's three parts, basically. We start with the speaking. Now it's hard to do speaking on a video lecture, but I'm going to show you the questions in a moment. After the reading section, we will do reading, uh, sorry, after the speaking section, there will be a reading section. Um, and then we will finish the class with the writing skills, or we can call it language development. Okay, so each class essentially has three parts to it. All right, so if we were doing an offline class, this is where we would do the speaking part. And maybe I can just show you the questions that we would have used for the speaking. Okay, so we have student A and student B, and basically you spend 10 minutes interviewing each other. Okay, so if I just choose a few here, student A, the first question says, do you have a pet in your home now or in the past? Now, if your partner said yes, you would move to this next part. If your partner said no, then you would move to this one. So that's quite simple, isn't it? Do you have a pet in your home? And you could ask follow on questions like, what is your pet's name? What kind of dog or cat is it? What is your pet's uh, age? Things like this. What are the pros and cons of owning a pet? Right, so maybe I can just write an answer. It might be helpful. Pros means positive. Cons means negative. So what are the pros and cons of owning a pet? Pros of owning a pet. Maybe we'll just do one. So we'll say a pro. Pro of owning a pet is that the animal gives us love and uh, affection. Con, a negative, a con is that raising a pet can be expensive. Food, hospital, things like this. Okay, so when we do the speaking, we just give simple answers to practice a little bit of speaking. What animals are you scared of? Why are you scared of them? Okay, so everybody's going to have a different answer. I'm scared of crocodiles. I don't know why, because I've never actually seen one in the wild. But I have watched many videos on YouTube.
Okay. Have you ever been bitten, stung, or attacked by an animal? So these are the past participles, the PPs. Bite, bit, bitten. Sting, stang, stung. So what kind of thing stings us? Like a jellyfish or a bee? Okay, so again, just give an answer. Yes, when I was younger, I was stung by a wasp. A wasp is like a bee, everybody. In England, they're quite common. So this is what we would do at the start of the class. Let's just have a look at student bee questions. Do you know any examples of endangered animals? Now, the reason that is there is that it is connected to the textbook, which I will show you shortly. Um, do you prefer cats, dogs or cats? Why? What animals do people hunt in Korea? This, this question was a little bit confusing for some people. People hunting animals. So what animals do people hunt in Korea? Now, I don't actually know the answer, but I could give you an example. People hunt wild pigs, which are also called boars. Because they can be dangerous and also can eat their meat. Right, I think enough for the speaking part. So again, we cannot speak well in a video lecture. Um, but next time we have the offline class, we will do the speaking. All right, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go to the reading section of unit one. Okay, so let's have a look at the book. Now I have unit one as a PowerPoint here. Unit one. Now every unit in the book has two reading articles. Reading one, reading two. We will read one article only in the classroom. Okay, so for unit one, we will have a look at reading one. Now, first of all, the vocabulary, we need to make sure that you understand the words. If you need to, translate them into Korean and write them in your book. And for a little bit of practice, we did not do this in the class, but you could fill in the missing blanks here if you want to practice. So look at number one. The black rhino is one of the most blank animals in the world. There are only about 5,000 left today. The answer is endangered. The black rhino is one of the most endangered animals in the world. And the thing of that word, endangered, adjective, of plants and animals that may disappear soon. Okay, so make sure that you're okay with this vocabulary. And if you want to, you can have a go at filling in these blanks here. Okay, so in the classroom, we would we would read the article together. When you are reading, you should make notes. Circle any words that you don't understand or any sentences that you don't understand, and you can check them later. You can ask me or you can check online. Now, I would usually ask students to read, but this is a video, so I guess I will read it. Now, reading is important, everybody. Let me just explain why. First of all, 
Reading is good to improve your vocabulary. You can see new words, you can learn new words, and you can see how to use them in sentences. Two, you can improve your pronunciation by reading. And number three, in this class, you are going to have to uh, do some writing later in the semester. And the things that you write should look similar to the articles in the book. So we're also looking at structure and format of these articles. Okay, so this one, endangered species. So I will read it and you can listen to the pronunciation. Here we go. So paragraph one, an endangered species is a group of animals or plants which could soon become extinct. Extinction happens when the last animal of the species has died out and there will be no more. Many species are nearly extinct and could disappear from the earth very soon if we don't do anything to save them. There are many reasons why species become endangered, but most harm to species is due to human activities, such as habitat destruction, hunting, and overfishing. Okay, so this is paragraph one. Now, there are some things that we have to just mention here. In the first paragraph, the first sentence, or maybe the second sentence, is going to tell us about the topic. So the topic of this article is quite obvious because the title and the first sentence, they both have these words, endangered species. That is obviously the topic. Okay, now in paragraph one, the final sentence is often what we call a preview. This will tell the reader what is coming next in paragraphs two and three and maybe four. Okay, so the final sentence of paragraph one is often called a preview. Right, let's keep going now. So paragraph two, and you can see in the preview, the words habitat destruction, hunting and overfishing. So we can probably guess that the article is going to talk about those things. All right, paragraph two. Hab habitat destruction is the main reason why animals become endangered. This happens in two ways. First, when humans move into a new area, they cut down trees to build houses and farms. This destroys the animal's habitat. And a habitat is the natural environment where plants or animals usually live and leaves them without food. Animal habitats are also destroyed because of pollution. Dirty water from factories, which contains chemicals, ends up in rivers and poisons used on farmland may even kill animals which live in the area. Okay, so paragraph two, everybody, is giving us one example of habitat. Uh, sorry, one example of why animals are endangered. And the reason is habitat destruction, killing animals' homes. Right, paragraph three is now going to give us lots of examples of endangered species. Endangered species are also the result of hunting and fishing. Animals such as the Arabian oryx are nearly extinct because of the high price of their meat. By the way, extinct, a word which was also in the first uh, paragraph. Extinct means the animals are all gone. They have disappeared. So endangered, the numbers are low. Extinct, they are totally gone. Okay, let's keep going with paragraph three. 
Animals such as the Arabian oryx are nearly extinct because of the high price of their meat. Other animals are killed for their fur, bones, or skin, or just for sport. For example, some seal species are now almost extinct because they are killed for their fur to make coats. Tigers are shot to make medicine and tea from their bones. And crocodiles are caught to make bags and shoes. Large sea creatures like whales, tuna and sharks have all become endangered species because of overfishing. Too many are caught to make special dishes that people like to eat, such as sharks, sharks fin soup or sushi. Okay, so lots of examples of endangered species in paragraph three, and also reasons why they are endangered, why people kill them. Right, now paragraph four, and this is the last paragraph in this article. Often the final paragraph has a message to the reader or maybe some kind of recommendation. All right, so paragraph four. What steps can individuals and governments take to protect more animal and plant species from becoming endangered? We should try not to pollute natural areas and farmers or companies who destroy animal habitats should face a financial penalty. The public can help out by refusing to buy products made from animals' body parts, such as seal fur coats or crocodile bags. Governments can help too, by making it against the law to hunt, fish or trade in endangered species. They can also provide funding for animal sanctuaries and zoos. These protect animals from extinction by breeding more endangered animals, which can later be released into the wild. If we all cooperate by taking these steps, we will protect our planet so that our children and their children can enjoy it too. Okay, so there are some useful expressions here. In the middle, it says governments can help too by making it against the law. The meaning of that expression, against the law, it's the same meaning as illegal. Legal, illegal. Something is illegal, it is against the law. Drinking alcohol and driving your car is against the law. It is illegal. Um, and also in the next sentence, it says they, which means governments, they can also provide funding, that's money, for animal sanctuaries and zoos. An animal sanctuary is similar to a zoo, but its purpose is to protect endangered animals. It's, it's not for entertainment. It is to protect endangered animals. So sometimes you might see a tiger sanctuary or a panda bear sanctuary. It's a place to protect endangered animals. Right, everybody, so that is the reading. And what we would usually do if we were together in the classroom, I would ask you to answer some of the questions on the next page. Okay, so I'll ask you to do this. I would like you to answer the questions here in part four and part five. Okay, now this is a video lecture, but this is a way that you can do some self-studying. And I would like you to also send this to me. So you're gonna, you're gonna complete this page, um, page 20, just part four and part five. And when you're finished, you take a picture and you will send it to me by email. I will write this at the end. All right, so page 20. 
In fact, let's put it here. So self-study tasks. Complete. Page 20. Part four and part five. Take a photo. Email here just while we're talking about it. It's in the syllabus that I gave you as well, don't forget. Lambert's close23 at gmail.com. Okay, so that would be the reading section. Now you don't have to do reading two, so let's skip that. And what we do next is we look at some of the language development pages, starting on page 25. Okay, so language development, is gonna give you writing skills. All right, so the first thing we're going to do is comparative adjectives. It's probably review for most of you, but students often make mistakes. So we're going to check it again. So the most important thing is that you understand the rules. And the grammar box tells you the rules. Comparative means comparing two things, comparing A with B, and you do it by using adjectives. All right, so the first thing is you need to understand the meaning of the word syllable. You can see that at the top there, syllable. Now what a syllable is, is how many parts are there in a word? So if you think of an adjective, for example, expensive, how many syllables, expensive, three syllables. Um, heavy, heavy, two syllables. Pretty, two syllables. Important, important, three syllables. Okay, so that is the meaning of the word syllable. And you need to know that because this tells you about the rules of making a comparative adjective sentence. Okay, so look in the box at the top. If the word has one syllable, all you have to do is make it ER. So if the word is small, one syllable, then to make a comparative adjective sentence, you say smaller. Look at the example. The red squirrel is smaller than the gray squirrel. Large, one syllable. The gray squirrel is larger than the red squirrel. Big, one syllable. The gray squirrel is bigger than the red squirrel. Right, now students make a common mistake with this. And the mistake is, incorrectly incorrectly um, using the word more. So let's make a note here, comparative adjectives. Do not use the word more if the adjective is just one syllable. So example, fast, one syllable. So you would say, I am faster than you. You do not say, I am more faster than you. It is wrong. Okay, so you do not use the word more if the adjective is just one syllable. And you do not use the word more Do 
not use the word more if you are using two syllable word which ends in y. So for example, words, words like scary, spicy, heavy, pretty, you don't use more. You don't say my dog is more pretty or more prettier than your dog. You just say my dog is prettier than your dog. Okay, so this is the rule about making these sentences and it's in your book, you can see it here. So make sure that you are okay with this. And then what you can do is you can fill in the answers here, page 25, part two. So fill in the correct answers. All right, so let's add that to the self-study tasks. Complete page. What page did we say it was? I've already forgotten, 25. Complete page 25, part two. Okay, and again, you're gonna add it to the email. Just one email, obviously, with the different pages. Right, everybody, so that would be the comparative adjectives um, section. Okay, and then what we do next is we look at some more language development. What we want to do is finally, we want to write a paragraph which is comparing and contrasting. So you take two things, whatever it is, in your book, it has a whale shark and a tiger shark on page 27. And we're going to compare and contrast. How are they similar? How are they different? Okay, so we have the comparative adjectives. And what we can also do is we can use some skills in the comparative section. Okay, so students often, they use too many sentences when they are writing. Um, students will say things like, today, I'm very tired. Today, I'm also feeling blue. I want to go home early today. So three sentences. Now, it's not very good English. Just make it one sentence like this. Today, I'm feeling tired and a little bit blue. So I want to go home early. One sentence, it's, uh, it's much more academic and it just is better English. So here are some ways that you can do that. You can combine sentences using the words and and or. All right, so if the sentence is a positive sentence, have a look at the example. The tiger shark has sharp teeth. The tiger shark has a powerful bite. Let's make it one sentence. The, tar the tiger shark has sharp teeth and a powerful bite. It's much better. Uh, the next one is a negative sentence. So we use or. The tiger shark is not an endangered species. The tiger shark is not a protected species. One sentence. The tiger shark is not an endangered or protected species. Okay, everybody, so combining sentences, here are some questions that we could do just together, part two. The whale shark is gray blue, 
the whale shark has light spots on its body. So we would do like this. The whale shark is gray blue and has light spots on its body. Number two, the tiger shark is gray brown and has a striped pattern on its body. Let's do a negative one, number four. The whale shark is not aggressive or dangerous to swim with. Okay, so this is one way to combine two sentences into one. Okay, so let's move on now to the last page that we're going to look at, page 30. Right, so now if you are comparing or contrasting two different things, to make one sentence, we could use the word but, and another word that has the same meaning is whereas. So this time we have two things that we want to describe. So we have the tiger shark and we have the whale shark. So look at the example. The tiger shark has sharp teeth and a powerful bite, but the whale shark does not. So it's showing how two things are different. Okay. Uh, if I just give a different example. My older brother, likes listening to hip hop music, but I prefer guitar music. Okay, so it's showing the difference between two things. All right, and if we just look at the next part, if you wanna show how two things are similar, you can use the words both and neither. So the example here, both the gray and red squirrel carry parapox virus. So that's how the two squirrels are similar. And if you want to show how they are similar in a negative way, you can use the word neither. Neither the gray nor the red squirrel has large ears. Okay, so both showing how two things have the same characteristic. Neither is showing how two things don't have the same characteristic. All right, everybody, I'm going through this quite quickly, but that would be the pages that we would study in the book. Okay, so a quick review. Vocabulary check on page um, 18, page 20 has reading one, uh, sorry, page 19 has reading one, page 20 has the questions that you should answer in your book and email to me, and then forward to page 25 and we look at the comparative adjectives, fill in the answers and send them to me. And then we are looking at some language to use to combine sentences. Now, there is something else that you have to do. And this is the writing assignment for unit um, one. If I quickly open up the Smart Campus. Okay, so I'll share the screen again. Yeah, so here's the Smart Campus. So week two, you need to have a look at this one. It says writing task. Okay, this is a writing assignment for week two. So you click that and what you will see is this file. Okay, so this is the writing assignment for unit one. And you're going to write a compare and contrast paragraph. Now, here is the example. This is my example in the middle of the uh, page. And you can use that as a reference to help you. The instruction is at the top. So let's have a look at the instruction. 
compare and contrast. Right, first, choose any topic. And I've given you some examples, animals, sports, cities, seasons. Choose any topic. Next, when you have your topic, you need to choose two examples from that topic. And then you're going to compare and contrast those two examples. So clearly, introduce the topic and the two examples in the first sentence. Have a look at my first sentence. London and Cambridge are two famous cities located in England. So what is my topic? Famous cities. What are my examples? London and Cambridge. So the first sentence, please introduce the example clearly. And then what I want you to do is basically show me that you can use the language on pages 29 and 30. So let's highlight it. Please use a similar uh, color code like my one. Okay, so the red color is factual information, neutral. The red color is comparing. That means how London and Cambridge are similar. And the blue is contrast. How are London and Cambridge different? Okay, so you should write a paragraph similar to my one using the language correctly. I'll just read my example. So both London and Cambridge are located in the southeast of England. London is a huge city, whereas Cambridge is much smaller. London is the capital city of England and the population there is almost 9 million people. But Cambridge has just around 150,000 people. Both cities are popular tourist destinations. Okay, now the orange part is just factual information. In London, people can visit Big Ben, Tower Bridge, the London Eye, or watch a musical such as The Lion King or Les Miserables. In Cambridge, tourists usually take a walk around the famous university or take a boat trip along the river. London is far more polluted than Cambridge. See the, the comparative adjective, far more polluted. And there are many more cars and buses on the roads. Both cities are very old. Cambridge is quieter than London and a better place to live, in my opinion. Okay, everybody, so your answer, this is where you're going to write your paragraph and you will send it or you will submit it to the Smart Campus. So what I will do right now is make an assignment folder. I don't know if you can see this, but let's do it. Week two, compare and contrast. This is worth one point and you have one week to complete this. So March 22nd, 1 p.m. because that is your class time. Save and publish. I don't know if you saw me do that. So let me just reshare the page. So here we go, look, week two, and there you can submit your work. Writing task. So the, the comparative adjectives file, you do not need to do anything. The comparative adjectives, you do not need to do it. Just the writing task. Right, everybody. So. That is pretty much it for unit one. So one final thing to add here. 
do the writing assignment for week two. It is a compare and contrast paragraph. Now this one, you don't email it to me, you submit it on you, um, Smart Campus. Okay, so you will complete page 20, part four and part five, and you will complete page 25, part two. And those two, you will take a photo and you will email your book pages to me. And you should do that also before uh, next week's class. And then you also need to do the writing assignment for week two, and that one you will submit on the Smart Campus. And that is it, everybody. All right, so if your class was canceled at the last minute, sorry about that, but I hope that you can study with this video lecture and you can self-study with your book. Right, I will finish the video. See you soon, I hope.